can aviation be sustainable? Aviation can be sustainable. The industry has already made some great strides. It set itself some targets, for example, to achieve net zero by 2050, and has already made some good progress along the way. There are, there's been great progress made since, compare, so you compare the propulsion engines of 2000, the most modern then, to what is now available, and there's already a 35% reduction in, in CO2 emissions from those engines. There's also a future potential for a further 30% reduction. Welcome to another episode of A View from the Top. This week's subject is none other than the hottest subject in aviation, or indeed the world, sustainability. We have with us today James Hardy and Chris Mace. You are the head of sustainability group for the British Business and General Aviation Association. Yeah, I've been on the board of the BGA for just over three years now. I head up the working group on sustainability. We've certainly been considering many of the challenges that face our industry around that part. Brilliant. And Chris? Your expertise in the subject today is that you are the head of sustainability for the Air Charter Association. Yes, I chair the uh, the Sustainability and Innovation Group, which is a purely voluntary uh, position. I've been on the board for seven years, which also includes some of our members from the Next Generation Group. So some of the young members, because we need a whole range and raft of, uh, of age groups uh, within that group. Straight to the point, guys. Can aviation be sustainable? Aviation can be sustainable, yes. The industry has already made some great strides. It set itself some targets, for example, to achieve net zero by 2050, and has already made good progress along the way. Many people will argue the fact, have we made strides? Have we progressed? And are we able to meet the net zero by 2050? There's a long way to go. There's a heavy reliance upon sustainable aviation fuel. And uh, that brings lots of challenges because it needs to be produced in great volumes. And we don't have the plants and the refineries currently available to achieve that. So while sustainable aviation fuel is currently being used, it's being used in such small amounts that it needs considerable growth. And the only way we can do that is by getting governments to really support and push the use of sustainable aviation fuel. Can the current technology, the aircraft engines, support that? Yes, yeah, sustainable aviation fuel is fuel that's derived from sustainable sources. So, for example, it could be waste oil, waste fat, animal fat products. So these are a sustainable route to producing the fuel. It just doesn't come from the fossil sources. Aircraft engines and technology can use it at the moment, because of the regulation that's involved in aviation, and obviously safety is absolutely paramount, there are some limitations on its use. So it's being blended up to 50%. It won't be long before that blending will increase and then we'll be using 100% sustainable aviation fuel. One of the problems is fuel production. We're looking at sustainable aviation fuel as either a drop-in fuel or a replacement fuel for kerosene, which would have to be used for um, longer range aircraft and heavier aircraft. The faster you want to go, the further you want to go and the heavier you want to be, the less likely it is that you can use other alternative means of propulsion such as electric or hydrogen. So sustainable aviation fuel becomes a, an important part of the kerosene replacement programme and aviation is increasing its demand for that. So that sends signals into the supply chain that say, please produce more of this fuel for us. But the UK government is issuing a mandate that at least 10% of aviation fuel by 2030 will be from sustainable sources. Yeah, but that still leaves the other 90%. And our audience would like to know what we're doing about it. 
what, what you compare the propulsion engines of 2000 to what is now available and there's already a 35 percent reduction in in co2 emissions there's also a future potential for thir a further 30 percent reduction in co2 emissions from the existing engines into the future into the 2030s meanwhile for shorter range trips there is alternative potential in electric powered vehicles and hydrogen. What we'll see in the future is a changing mix of how aviation solves the problems that aviation solves. Currently we solve them using high performance jet engines. They're just the best available using the technology that we had. And what aviation still does for the world is solve problems that other means of transport just can't solve. There's also nit nitrous oxide emissions, noise and other, other polluting factors and also the whole infrastructure around aviation. So aviation as an industry is something that can be increasingly sustainable as long as we accept our responsibilities. But also sustainability is a planet sized problem. It's something that we have to share with all the other industries in the mix. I understand that, but many people argue that we're not doing enough. Aviation in itself is two to three percent of global emissions. And then when you take business and private aviation, that's another 2% of that too, which is 0.04%. So these are really quite small figures, but we're not saying that it's a small percentage so we don't have to worry about it. Actually, as James said, aviation has been doing a lot of investment, recognised it very early on, and is making some good strides through all the challenges that come with aviation, huge amounts of regulation, huge amounts of safety that goes with it. It's not as simple as just plugging in batteries because of aerodynamics, weight issues, <coughs> performance on aircraft. Those are the challenges that aviation has to overcome. It will overcome them, but it will take time. And that's why the net zero timeline and pathway is set as a realistic timeline. I think one of the key important things, as James touched on earlier, is it's not just one solution. It's going to be a basket of measures. The first electric certified aircraft is already flying. It has a very short range. It can fly for just, just under an hour. And it's only a two-seat aircraft. But like all technologies, it will improve over time and we will start to see larger aircraft and therefore the ability to plug them in to current aircraft routes. Do you think that the industry has been attacked unfairly? Are we an easy target? That is a very real danger that if you just point a finger at the biggest target that you can see around you and say that's an aeroplane and that's burning an awful lot of fuel and that needs to be stopped, then yes, it's an obvious problem. Let's solve it in this way but it doesn't really take account of why that aircraft exists at all. Aircraft use the technologies that we've been using, that we've developed over the last hundred years or so, because that was what was available to solve the problem that aviation solves, which is high speed mass transportation safely. Uh, people still want that, which creates certain challenges because we need to support what people want to do that's a kind of political problem to some degree. And we also need to provide leadership as an industry to look after the planet for future generations. We understand in aviation better than anyone that there are problems with uh, the use of the fuels that we're using in that they contribute to CO2 emissions and various other things. But they also are an incredibly valuable means of of economic activity. We need to trade down from one thing to the other and do that in an effective way that doesn't just destroy an industry, destroy jobs, reduce the ability for people to travel, which in itself could have other unforeseen effects on the way that we view the world. If I was to take three things away from this discussion so I can go to my children this evening and tell them with my hand in my heart that I'm not a bad guy that is destroying the environment what would you give me? Aviation continues to evolve by using better sources of propulsion and better aerodynamics. 
There's also a revolution coming in the ability to use electric and hybrid flight, whether it's with hydrogen or hydrogen electric. And finally, the fact that we're a regulated industry that is also setting ourselves high standards that allows us to operate safely, efficiently, effectively, using the best, in, best technologies available. Very good point. Thank you both for joining us today. It's been a pleasure.